Well, I think from from observation and reading articles, it, it'll always be a narrative of how, for example, a Theo Balo will explain it and how someone else will say, yeah, but show us your books, prove to us you haven't been funded. I interviewed him in, what, 2014, 15 sure. at UJFM, and his story was straight. I'm selling from the boot of my car. And his funding has not been, according to him, it has not <laughs> been according to... According to him, is very important. <laughs> hey, James, are we filming? Oh, Must we yeah, shoot now? Yeah, we're just shooting, but you'll, no officially, more server. you'll officially say we're filming, but we're just filming. Are you, are you, are you officially filming? Yeah. I'm going to have a small feel like cook with tea, Baba. And then you give me my, my tea. <laughs> and then there's a, and then there's a stunt. <laughs> 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 hey, Fusak! I've never seen. Why are you not listening? I mean, I'm going to say, Fusak, but sorry, Baba. And then, All right, turn around. can we practice? Yes. Quick pra no, practice quickly now. Are we filming officially? Yeah, we're filming officially. Yeah. We can't film officially. We are filming officially. This thing that we're discussing now is not like a... Oh, this one made the cut. So what we're trying to, what we're doing now, what do we... No, let's start, let's start. Actually, no, actually, cut, cut. Let's no, cut. don't cut. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I want to speak about Batu and Trip, actually. No, 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 no. We're not going to put it in the cut. No, you can put in the cut. No, no but I but you see, you see. The beat, no, no, no. For me, it, it's a difference. Omelo is not going to say anything, Dodge. I will. It's the, oh, the thing okay. is, is that it, I think we when I was. I think it's a good example to use. It's just that it's it's like we're speaking in third person, um, or not even third person. We're speaking about someone that can't speak for themselves sure. in direct light. Sure. So and especially because it's existing businesses, there's factuals, there's what what. But yeah, <laughs> if you really wanted to know, yeah, why didn't you ask me? There should be No, I gave you a thingy. Oh, that one. So, so yes, please. Oh, so good. So why didn't you ask me? Jengos, jengos tumo. As na mali we panel show, we had to recycle our tea bags, baba. Get new. Sorry, sorry, Melody. Sorry? The visuals are dope. Thank you. Sorry, you were interrupted. You were still saying the person's not here to defend themselves. It's not even, yeah, the person's not here to defend themselves, but that's not the, Thank the you first very much, issue. Sir. I think the first issue becomes, Uguti, um, we can use it as an example, but don't, don't sound like we're the haters on them directly because for me, I can't say if Uguti, they're funded by Abelung or not until I say factually, this is what we read and this is what they were told. So all I would believe is that I'll give Taki the benefit of the doubt. Why? Because I believe that that's the one thing we never got in our own homes. So it's almost like hashtag I believe her. No, it's very different. That is, is statistically proven. This is the concept of experience that you've lived in in a black house where they were like, your parents wouldn't, in this age, they would defend you first. But back in the day, you first get the club. Yeah. Then, then you get the questions. So that's different. So I don't think we should approach it in the manner of they could be lying right because if they are lying then they have sold us a dream that is not helping the generation grow part of the visual uh, what do they call them part of the uh, vision statement and mission statement speak about what exactly that we see we are building the african dream mm. but is it really the african dream if you're saying you're not funded and you're actually funded then you've actually lost that you've lost us now in that and that's tough are you happy with the sound sorry melody is a bit far from the mic yeah, I just, I just, is that your most comfortable? No, where you, where you are comfortable, let me know. Then you prefer leaning no, back or leaning you can, in? You can, you can, no, you can bring it in. Ubuntu Melody is a professional. Uh, no, no, but no, please I be mean, comfortable. Oh, no, tell no, me we're no. comfortable, we'll move it according to your comfortability. No, the thing is I'm loud. So this is my projection in a conversation that might make it seem like, it's just the chat. Yeah, no, everything's good. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. The only thing that we must be mindful of is, um, it's quarter to one now. Sure. Power leaves at two. Okay. So that means yeah, but we've got a, no, we'll be, be done by two. We'll be done by two. We'll be done by two. We'll be done by two. I'm gonna check the time. Ten two. Ten two. Yeah. Why not five two? Okay, five two. Five two two. Five two. We are switching to uh to solar. Okay. Five to two. We'll be done by then. And I'm really hoping. I'm hoping a melody will come back, man. I'm hoping Melody will come back so that even though this will be short, we can still chat some more. I'm chilled. These guys are interrupting our session, man. And we're supposed to be filming officially. Do you guys, are you guys going to edit out all this nonsense of Nkuluma? No, I don't really want this here, so. No, I don't want this here, so. No, I don't want this here, so. I'm a professional. Hey! 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 
Hey! Except hey. 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 Q, Q, please keep keep these parts in so people can see what's in the unprofessional ganjan. <laughs> Let me welcome you officially, even though some of the previous chats might be part of the conversation. Melody. Melody. Yeah, Mia. It's actually Melody, yes. Uh, that's that's the first oh. that's the first lesson of the day. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's it's just that how people don't understand Ugo Tim. Um the name itself is it derived from the story that was told in or rather was told to me by my, my parents, mm. whereby Uguba Melody is convenient in the Zulu setting, but it's not the actual definition. It's defined because of my understanding of music as a child, Uma Ikulel. And when my mom was pregnant, that was when she actually was like um, every time, for example, T.D. Pendergrass plays while my mom's pregnant, that's been Kachel. Don't need to be jive. Yeah, Kachel. I understand. Yeah. And I think people who know me now will know that that's what I love doing Yeah. Um, in my older age. So as the time went on, my dad was like, I can't call him Harmony. I'm not going to say that I'm South Africa. Because I mean, I'm not mom and dad. I'm not going to know. Let me call him Melody. He understands the melody in the music. Yeah. And you've and you've lived up to your name because almost everything about the way you move, your your faith in Christ, everything is melodical, musical. You you bounce to your own beat. Crazy faith because you know, Peno, we'll probably go through a couple of things in this chat. Sure. But one of them will always be as identity. Mm. I mean, uh, when I was told that my name is Melody and Bati Abanya, it is Miluba. It is Zul, it is Kai. That is your like, slave name. What's the know, African... What's the African name? In that time, I'm wearing an African signature. Benili right? Nyama Noto. Ah, but say that's what I find. You guys are having meat without us. Hey, you know, Malanga Nizanba Nyingi. Hey, no, no, no. We're making sure... Don't be stingy, Baba. <laughs> Ubuntu is about abundance. <laughs> no, no, hundreds. But, but in, in essence, it's, it's that thing where Bati Melody Mia. Yeah. Melo Timia. yeah. Someone said it's a stage name. Of course. It right? sounds like it. I, I actually even thought, because we had a melody in high school. Very pretty lady. I was about to say. So I was like, hey, melody me, I ain't got to cheer it blind, you must. There's like, figure away, and you're like, ah, outy. Outy. That is so funny. You got that, it's true, dog. That's people are like, I'm Are you sure you're Zulu? Are you not Khaled? Are you mm. not Utalut? Paka. Sure. Sorry, no, you were still speaking about, uh, a lot of people ask about your name. Where's your African name? Do you have another name? I don't, but it's it's just Melody Mia. And I think it was very interesting how my parents saw that fit for yeah. me to work in TV and radio, to be the star of the show, wherever I can be, if not mm. the facilitator of a show. And it's also something that I've kind of understood is that when I go international and whatever I decide to do in yeah. global, it will always be easy to raise it. Oh no, man, I'm from South Africa. That's the one. I money, money, queens. You know, I know you on the man. I, I, I owning I, which is something I'm grateful for. I live in prophecy. I'm a living prophecy in my own way. You've got a, you've got a, a, a very comfortable name, an international name, American, Asian, Melody Mia. Yeah. Your confidence from when I met you at UJ. I think it was at UJFM. Yeah. Looking at the work you were doing, Evasti Cup, with your short, Ubu short. I almost said it's under the table. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, No, man. Zach, um, is a bit, uh, <laughs> you, you, from when I met you, bro, your, your, your energy, your confidence. I think even now, to what you're saying about like living in a prophecy, I, I don't think you've ever doubted yourself. Where do you where do you get that stuff from? This is not an interview, by the way, but I'm just curious. <laughs> um, it's actually crazy. I was talking about it to myself this morning after Michelle Pants, you know, Sure. And one of the things that came about is that and I was telling you myself that I'm gonna tell you, Oguti, I wish you knew how much I had to fight myself to meet myself. It took stages of rebuilding and dressing and dressing the idea of who are you. And some people are like, oh, that's so motivational. No, 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 it's not. It's an actual struggle, not just in South Africa, but in the globe. So many stars, and you like listen to their stories. You realize, see, this person was very confident in who they are, but because they were selling bullshit ahead, pardon the language, but it hmm. is what it is. 
it's some people become what they are today is because they sold what they believe in until we believed it. Mm. So for me, it was a question whereby as an overthinker, it was the balance between am I really that dope or am I someone who believes they're dope but hasn't reached the stage? So you end up coming across as arrogant. Sure. I mean, I was watching the interview you got when you was here and many other ones, someone that I really aspire to to take a few characteristics that he has in him. Sure. And one of them is that he's found a way to articulate him defined. Just mm. him. And and for me, it was like, what makes you the best? And I then started realizing I've actually done some dope things. Mm. I've actually really done some really smashing moments. But I stopped echoing my greatness because the world didn't see that it's dope. And that's where the overthinking started coming in. I mean, look at what you did. Look at your life story alone. Mm. No one has exactly the same as you or as you as Penwell. Sure. But some people wish they had the confidence to do what you did. And I only did it because I was just like a child. I can define in the level of brilliance and sure. attempt. In Ghana, I has luto. And the, so the, the purity it. and the innocence of yeah. attempting things without, without worrying about what people are going to think. Listen, a child will walk off a table and, you, and you're like, no, don't do it, you're going to die, right? But the child itself is not thinking about death. Mm. It's like, how would it be? Yeah. And and that's why to go back to the question of your confidence that we tell but I mean, bro, I've gone through depression as a young boy. I, I actually left Guamashu. I used to live in Guamash, born mm. in Joburg, but in Kulile Guamash. In Durban. In Durban, who killed Mosh. And I left Guamash because I had an identity problem. Everyone around me used to make fun of me. You know, that's the, the tone that mm. you grew up around. And then I said, I mean, I know I want bigger. Yeah. 2004, I start making attempts in vision. 2005, I leave in grade, I think grade eight, it was, I think, the 4th of May. in Alberton. Mm. Me going to live in Alberton was with the vision and simple mission. I need to identify as Melody, not to find myself stall. Sure. Because what my was stall. Sure. And people will never see me for being great, as I'll just say, guys, see? Why? Because what And the case, it was not that was not the case. The case was far different for me. Mm. Because I was just a boy who had a dream, and at the time no one understood my currency. Who was in Alberton and, and the, the shop that you guys owned, who did it belong to? So the shop was in Guamash. That's okay. owned by owned by Uma. Okay. Shout the out to your mom. It's only it straight. What Today, what shop was it? So it was like a, a general dealer. Okay. So Gwamapumulu, speaking of Gwamapumulu, because that's my grandfather's name, okay. uh, clan name. And so also get to win, also I grew up dog working in a tax shop. That's the first currency that I knew in money. Uguti aban to Bakhtori That's the first thing I learned. Sure. Working in a in a shop as a kid, you're a six-year-old. Some adults that you respect are trying to crook you over Polon. Pulling with the Randy Fart, they found your shot. And you keep water or father or water. That's the stuff we grew up in. I grew up people coming to my house every day to have fun because it eventually became Dando's Tavern, which is what it is today. Mm. And now people are like, hey, Melo, to go to Velen, what else? What is Uzobeng and Erez? Namanga. The truth is Namanga. Mm. And I'm saying this not in disrespect, but in factual of the tone of the community that we come from doesn't scream that you're going to make it. Yeah. Because when you do make it, they're the first people to say, I appeal a million Of course. Is that you saying thank you for what you believed in me before? Sure. No. And that's why I stopped being entitled. I was like, I fit. Those who get it, get it. But until I meet those people, this is a setting I don't want to set too hard in. Mm. Which would, for Puma Wamashu, sing your bonny call Patelin. Who's in Alberton? Uh, I swear, Gatlong in okay. the East. So I'm from East Rand Gatlong, but we studied, went to school in Alberton, Alberton High. And that's where... I'm trying um, to calculate between Guamashu and Alberton. When you left Guamashu, your mom was still there running a business. Yeah. And who was who are you coming to here? Ubaba. Okay. So dad oh, is... So your dad, dad was somewhere else. Dad is born in Joburg. Okay. As am I. But Uma, um, Okay. Yeah. So that's how the two kind of separate. And bro, it was so interesting, eh? Got to Joburg meeting Sutu girls. <laughs> No, it was it was really, really interesting because I now had to identify as a typical Zulu or Funda Nabesutu. Or am I gonna identify as a new age Zulu who wants to adapt but still be in charge? 
and that's how I see it. I mean, Ubom Zulu, we have we come from the Ngunis that have a, an understanding of dominance. Sure. It's in our blood. It comes all the way back to our ancestry line. Sure. But we need to be new age Zulus in concept. You know what I mean? 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 Anyway, but you know what I mean? So sure. it was the mindset of shift yourself to adapt enough to be able to lead again. Two questions are coming up in my mind. The first yeah. one being your thoughts around the township space because I hear so many black people. I think Upal Tusi was the last person to say it. Um, one of the things Ufus himself has said before on a platform was this idea that the definition of success for a black man is to move as far away from his people as possible. <laughs> but Upal Tusi was speaking about something a lot of people speak about. Uti, the mindset I say, as if it is not healthy. You need to get out of there because there's almost the crabs, pull me down, those things. So I'd like to hear about that. And then I'd like to chat about the transition of leaving Umama to live under Ubaba. And if that was at all important for you as, mm. as a young as a young man. Sure. Um, I think to the first part, um, both of those statements hold water in different spaces. Okay. It's, it's, it's just a texture we need to kind of find out. And for me, the texture of it is that who are you speaking of when you speak of the township? Okay. Are you speaking of Abanto Kule Nabo? Are you speaking of Abanto Kule Nabo Zalbako? Are you speaking of the people you went to school with in the same township? Because sure. that are brilliant minds, right? And Basa Selokshin, the difference is for them, it makes them happy. Okay. So for them, it doesn't change what to say, look, Shin, it's just that it's the, are they in charge of their life? Are they in control of Upkebengu? Because sure. because look, Shin, that's where he's, he's, it's his territory. So he's king. He's, he's king, yeah. right? But then change it to someone who is just a community leader that enjoys embracing the community. It will be same like what mm. sure. But now I put myself in this context. The township is a place where dreams are truly built. Because if I was born in a mansion, I don't think I'd be as ambitious, as hungry as I am today. Every day, it's not for everybody. That's, I think, something that we must just take in consideration. But on top of that, Buff, Elogishi is a space that we define, and I said it earlier, in tone. I'm a Razobap. Because I can tell you, me as a hot man in my hood, Kasi or in in Iguamashu, people only see me as value because of this. Sure. But you But they're probably forgetting that what I would probably love to see a Lokshini is respectful people. Mm. When you see Baba next door, it's a shy. As in Ghana, see a baleg. Go to Baba next door, low boy now. He keeps quiet. I think we've changed how the township was a space where there was value and moral. Mm. And that's why I constantly tweet about moral degeneration because we aren't understanding why morals were important in a community like Ilogish. Yeah. Sure. But now we, 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 we live in suburb Ilogshin. High walls? Whose car? Who's buying a new car? Who's not buying a car? Konke Loko is now feeding the competition. Mm. It's not feeding the mental growth. It's not feeding Uguti. I mean, you see a basic thing, Fetu, how the numbers of rape have rised, not after even people announced Uguti, but Fetu, we need to start being active. But it's the fact that people are so individualistic. Sure. How can a rape incident happen? It's because we don't believe together. Is it not a matter of... <laughs> the most moral and the best quality of black Africans have left the township. No. Maybe. And only the, the lower moral, worst of the least ambitious, the ones not willing to travel, the ones not willing to maybe even use education mm. as a stepping point. They're the ones that were left behind. I once heard, I, I think I read, someone said something along the lines of, one of the reasons the townships are the way they are assuming they are negative, mm. toxic spaces for a lot of people, is because the most intelligent children mm. have left. They move to go and study, they go live somewhere else, etc. 
the people that end up becoming the ward councillors, the local leaders, the community leaders, it's going to be the kids that were not doing well at school and that were rowdy and problematic. They have no choice. So you almost have the worst there when you speak about the domain and the kingdom running that space and the kids who want to thrive almost want to run away from a space like that. It, it's just said, I'm going to make an example of me leaving Durban wasn't because I had a better opportunity. I left Durban because I had an option. Yeah. I didn't leave Albertine suburb. No, I left to go live in another township with other people, mm-hmm. which is the K1. And and now the Laba Basele looks in to your question again. Basele fetu because the banana option lay. Pela botale looks in, but we ma farm. If you are a problem, to me ma farm. True. And ma farm will buy farm for him bulu sin kong. Sure. And not many people, of course, would want to look to that option. Mm. So they rather prove dominance in the township, which normally is what in some. Fetu na zokche la fetu kusho mu boni tanga yako. As I am, what, 31 now? Yeah. And I see my age mate looking like a 40-year-old. Sure. And 40-year-old, not because of anything, but just eat dagwamis. The use of drugs, of alcohol. The the lack of balance. Mm. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It might sound a bit low. or No, Kuluma face, please be free. No, no, it's in my head. But how should we age? I'm looking at her in the next 10, 15 years. My dad is 64 years old. In It's the same problem. And I'm like, how did my dad get it right? Mm. And then I started taking off the little things which go back to the things we're dealing with in the township, which is all these rotten apples that people claim to see and that are toxic. Those people are not given a chance to fight for themselves and just knowing what in fit to outer shop, out here Vugia cares. Ilogi she became a place where all the the the, the golden apples left. And when they left, these people want them, but they don't have the option of anything. Not always, but certain spaces. What's really preventing them from stepping up? And then for me, it just sits and be like, did, do we really, did we really have the same opportunity? Did we really have the same home where we are school any? And they tell you with the TV, actually, between five and, and seven, mm. so that you can read. Did we have all the opportunity of saying, Slupegili like higher, so maybe let's push any song? Or did we grow up in spaces where some of us are just traumatized? Mm. That I'm the only one, Langa Sekaya, on an iPhone. Um, one of the conversations I've had with my mom is this concept of giving back. I know you're passionate about charity and community work. Yeah. I've tried to do my bit as well, but I've carried this guilt. When you look at the Chinese community in China, they tend to send a lot of kids and young people overseas to go and learn, to go and explore, to go and get resources. But the plan and the vision is always to come back and Mm -hmm. plow back. When you look at some of the white Afrikaans people in this country, a lot of them travel overseas, they build businesses overseas, but then they come back and they develop beautiful towns like Stellenbosch, et cetera. We almost, as black Africans, don't have this thing. And the conversation I was having with my mom is, do we have an obligation and are we doing enough? My mom is from Ekvugeni Township near Ladysmith. My father's from Mpopomeni in Hawick in the Midlands. Mm-hmm. I was born in Matateni and then we left when I was five. And there's this guilt of when you meet all these communities who travel, let's say Pumagwamash and you don't have Ubaba or Tlali Katlewang. Pumagwamash, you're cool and you're like, but I have to somehow so that the kids have something to do. They have options. I'll open doors. And I know it's an unfair question to you, but it's a question to me as well of, do you think we really have an obligation to, to, to give back, especially in spaces where people didn't actually invest in you? They didn't invest in you. They didn't say, nah, Imali, go to Joburg, go do something. Some of them didn't believe in you. You are almost running away or... Are we doing enough? And what should we be doing to try and... Because you said the township is what you make it. Are we doing enough and should we be doing... What can we do to try and fix those spaces as the supposed golden apples that have seen better and know better? Instead of just seeing a girl you matriculated with looking... <laughs> we call it wounded, facially. Mm. You know, seeing a guy that you matriculated with, your extended cousin, mm. who looks like Ipara, 
and then you're like, that's tough. And then I'm like, but what are you doing? I know it's a tough question. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You don't have to be sorry. I think as, as, a, as, as a person who believes in the school of leadership, the school of thought, it's stuff that we need to really kind of sit with. Um, and which is why when I got into radio, the first radio show I did was a community radio. It was called The Community Center. Mm. On YouTube, if you go find it, it was, I'm with my dad. I'm asking him the hard questions. As I think a 20, what, 19 year old? Mm. Asking him, tell me, Baba, why did you divorce Uma? On radio? On radio, bro. Did you prep him? That thing, nothing. Hey, of course, I get it. No, but the synergy between of me and course Baba, like, yeah, yeah. the synergy between Baba, me. why did you divorce with my age? For a sec, switch it off. Give my land. No, the nice thing is that we have synergy, no, Bob. Mm. So we're able to kind of, he knows how to devil these words, right? And part, part and parcel to your question is that uh, the, the vision of community in Gifundong, Bob. Mm. Baba Ngzalayo, under his, under his biological, he has six children. Okay. But under his vision, he has over 20 children that he's put in through UJ, Anganashum. Mm -hmm. My dad hasn't worked in over, what, 30 years. I am Sebenzin. But my dad put us through Kenmo Private School. My dad took my brother to Livingstone Private School in Teguini. Sasuga, I went to Albert and I. From Albert and I, I went to the University of Johannesburg. Got my two degrees. Started my third. Went on to lecture. I'm not bragging. Shout out to your timer, man. Young understand the fit. And That's the power of a present father with a vision and who's willing to push and grind. Hence, I'm going to the children that my dad took to school. It's because he heard someone say, Hey, I can't go to school. But why is I can't go to school? But no, I don't have problem. Problem here in application here high. They didn't know in grade 11 that they were supposed to have these marks. Yeah. So a time where we have one who's okay, low show a blind side, ting him sees. Let me help out this child in grade 11 who hasn't applied, who doesn't know what to right. do. Maybe a bright child, but they just need some help. In Bro, grades. that communal vision that my dad had is a weakness for me today, and I'll explain why. Today I'm talking about people I bump into the streets. My, my, I, I only can call a stepmom because it's what the world says. Yes, but it's the English word. You, of you know it. what I'm saying? Yeah. My stepmom's children went to university because my dad had a vision for them too. Yes, mama did. She was a teacher. But my dad wanted to be there to help them, all of them move in, even get stuff that I didn't get in terms of access and support. Mm. But I can tell you for free. The communal vision starts in Genefet. I can't help the, the neighbor's child. I can't help if the, the neighbor child hates if my the mother. neighbor hates my mother. Yeah. How, how because we have an issue of our parents make us compete. Our auntie, my aunt, who want to play against my own mother and expect me then tomorrow when I make it to bring in their child because I know you hate my mom. So what I'm trying to get you in a broader vision. Family politics, mine. My man, I'm trying to get to a broader vision from Enzin as an example. There is so much hatred or effort towards hatred and dislike and competition that it's not currently winning against a communal vision. Mm. It's not winning because Inesfas, as an example, has helped so many of us in the university system, right? Yeah. But in that, everyone that owes one rand to Inesfas has not thought about putting back the one rand. 100%. But we rack it up there at Konka and not... Just make an example of a venue. Yes, we rack need, it up. I need, I need to give myself a shout out. I got NS fast in my first year at Rhodes. I made sure as soon as I started working that I paid it back because I was like, someone paid for me to get this money. So the least I can do is, is give it back so that they can help someone else. But I realize, again, moral degeneration, that so many of us don't have this concept. We think, I don't know, we think where the money comes from and we don't understand the long term that if we all milk the system and we cheat the system, in future, when your child is meant to get whatever funding or grant and it's not there, you're going to point at politicians and, and not at yourself. 100%. Hence, Sorry, communal hence, vision. Hence, hence, I'm saying there is a lack of communal vision, but also there's a lack of teachers of it. Because the people that are handing over a generation of institutions right now and, and, and structures that they've built are handing over something that's already at 20% capacity. We're sitting today and looking at, and you look at the stats, unemployment. Mm. You look at the stats of people that are inactive in our current economy. Mm. You look at the people that are just fighting for a slice of bread, my brother. Let me throw in this thought. Unemployment is at such a stage where it's painful to be unemployed. I'm saying this because I have been unemployed. I have gone through. As a freelancer, we all know. Flames. For those who don't know, but in Ghana, 23 still has a chance to try something.
because they have less failures than Ubaba on a 38 or Rusis on a 38 that is unemployed. A 38 year old is far closer to depression if they've not gone through the right spaces to support them. if you have kids? And you have children. Sebenzi. You're losing Inglu that you bought when things were good. You bought it for two million rand. You left for three years, two months to pay it off and you lose it all. You have a higher chance of wanting to leave this world than someone else. Mm. And I'm not saying it's a comparison. I'm just using of how the stages as you grow become harder. And for some other people, it's not the same. Mm. It's not worth living for. And that's why you see the increase in alcohol consumption. You see drugs being used easily because I'm stress in Tonga. Sing Bambe wine. And Ubamba wine, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, That stupid decision, that one stupid decision where you want to experiment with something that you know is not good for you. My brother, the worst thing is that you have never smoked a cigarette in 40 years. Hmm. That's the reality that we are in, and not just South Africa, but the world in its different forms. Yeah. So to come back to why don't we carry over to the neighbor, we've gotten to the stage where we feel like, I just have enough for me. Hmm. Even if it's just 100 then it's enough for me. Individualism driven by scarcity. Not even just scarcity, the lack of knowledge of how we can multiply the little we have. Sure. How did our mothers stretch the 8,000 rand they used to get to feed four kids? Sure. How did they stretch it? It's because they wanted to. It was a desire. Today, look at the numbers. People don't have kids that are rich. People in the middle class are running away from having a child. And it's because I can't afford it. Mm. I can't afford to bring my child into a, a life that has no curo, a life that has no ability to go to Inganyamiji, by land, school, and by drop it off. People are struggling with the most basic things that we actually must realize they're not really basic. Mm. They're luxury. Yes. It's a luxury. It's a big luxury. But you have a choice. And that's why I say to you, look at how many people who do have the money, mm. who actually can afford, are not having children. That They're is true. Trying. It's a it's They're a huge, children. it's meant to be a huge conversation where people are like, I can't afford yet earning 30,000 rand a month. <laughs> For not the knowing they're in the top 3% of earners in this country. Meanwhile, the average family in this country is probably living on, average family of four is living on 1,200 as a whole. As a whole. And really by space share. So I think to answer your question on, for me, you, and anyone else who feels like they're passionate about CSI. But for CSI, for me, is something that is simple. I want to be very clear, so I'm privileged. I have oh. the gift of desire of helping people. That's a gift I think I have because I want you don't. Yeah. Someone can see their friend struggling and they'll keep quiet. I say, I'm going to make so long. Hmm? I'll pray for you, my friend. And there's nothing wrong in the faith and application, but mm. also faith comes with works. Yeah. There has to be the work. And the work sometimes is what can I do to help you? Yes. So we lack in communal elements and understanding in family. Yeah. We lack it now in friendship, which is a big factor for me. What do you expect at work? Yeah. Of course. If that if I have to turn a blind eye and you get fired, I will turn that blind eye. Sure. But still, I won't get in my friend. I'll get in someone less so I can micromanage. Hundred percent, bro. And I, and I want to to give people perspective of where do these different visions come from. I've worked corporate in spinal surgery. I was a kid. I worked corporate, and I was like, "This is not for me." Fine. What were you doing there? Hey, people are going to be like, is this guy a spinal surgeon? No, 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 no. I'm not a spinal surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, not even. I got into the sales side of work, of spinal okay. surgery. So we did sales and I was, I, was, I was there for a good two years. Sure. And pff, what a crazy story yeah. of how people can love you and not love you at the same time. Mm. Okay, leave it, push it out. Walk into the freelance space. Sure. How many people can see that and find out you're dope? But... They, they don't want to do anything about helping you. What is freelancing to the So freelancing is person? someone that works from, we call them peace jobs, but professionally it's seen as you are project-based. Oh, so freelancer project. is uh, my peace job as a Harvard, yeah, or a private person. school. Literally, it, well, that's how I see it, because it's a peace job. We've got three weeks of shooting. Sure. After that three weeks, we're pelile. That's why the bank doesn't take us seriously. Yeah. Yet we bring in so much money. That's why the government disrespects the freelance space, because they don't realize how much money moves in the freelancers but they still don't qualify for a simple loan. Turning these over. Are, these are actors, musicians. These are actors, presenters, musicians, presenters, MCs. script writers, MCs. And these are all people. When I made my first million, I made it through MCing. I made it through shows. And I'm making it through as a prophet at the time. And I'm just like, 
Jeez, congrats, bro. You you made a million. I made a bar. I'm not going to lie to this you. This is why you're As eating meat on your own. Ah, young sugar. Like. Individually, Zimbabwe. No, bro, young sugar. No, I'm kidding. Sorry. Congrats, by the way. No, no, thank you, bro. I mean, I think I was working with a phenomenal team at the time, Sandra Kumete, Mfuezu. And in all that, making that million, when we started with our accountant at the time, we couldn't believe that we actually chopped up that much money from freelancing. Mm. Matt, and I think um, I think Ulona said it in one of the episodes. He was speaking about how the freelance game works in terms of if you have just one MC gig yeah. and you're charging 30,000, I need 10 in a month to make 300,000. I, I hear the numbers. I mean, I'm, I'm listening. just saying. Yeah. So someone who's doing 120 a month and, I'm, and I actually wanted to throw Vusi under the bus at that because I mean, when you look at his rate card and you do the math, it's nothing hectic, but he's worked towards it. That's the level and quality that he's reached as a particular person mm. or a musician. You look at MT when you hear that things are going through or the things they're going through, and you're like, but when you do the maths, it doesn't make sense. Mm. Ambitious was thrown under the bus. Why? Because they're like, dog, these guys have done how many gigs this month? When you look at the gig guide and not throwing him a bus, look at Shims's gig guide. You're like, nah, man, if you do the meds, how much are these guys throwing in? But mm. the government does, it doesn't mean anything to them. That's why we're forced to go into a business structure versus okay. an independent structure, which is also terrible because now you are forced to create a system that we are uneducated about. For 100%. Me, meaning that we need to hire three more people. Sure. The accountant must come in. Sure. And there must be a director or managing director. Sure. And then on top of it, there must be a secretary to help Michael manage the talent. Sure. Um, let me come back. I'm throwing. I need you to slow it down, though, um, before you bring it back. I hope I hope you haven't lost your point. Mm -mm. A lot of freelancers, at least in the entertainment space, there's other spaces as well, because they don't get a permanent income and salary. The banks, other funders, other spaces are not able to give them car loan for vehicle finance. They can't get a bond, mortgage, house loan, and other things. So you're, you're forced, if you have some type of a brain and advice, to set up a business so that the money that you get in becomes income for the business. Yeah. So that hopefully over time, you can pay yourself, even if it's a small amount, a salary with a payslip that you can then take. You could be making 500000 a month uh, in one month, 200000 in another month, 150000 in another month, and then you pay yourself fifteen or 20000 with a payslip standard, with a reference on the bank statement so that you can go after six months and say, here's my pay slip. You can call the company. That's that's what we're speaking about. So what we're getting to is that things like that even make it harder for you to say, I want to share because you don't even know how much you have for how long consistently mm -hmm. that you can keep. So we see artists go broke. It comes from the communal challenges that we have in the structural um, institutions in South Africa that don't grant us to be able to say, Let's help. Look mm. at COVID, dog. How many people lost their cars? How many people were sitting there? I know I was one of them who was affected because most of my work was live business. Yes, mm. I still did TV. I still did radio. But it was still like, yo, you move from a particular number to a particular number and sure. the margin was huge. But it was never about the money being the issue. It was, I don't have enough to share because That's what I'm lava, thinking. If you've got lava. dependents and your money goes down, you're like, I, I can't pay you guys. That's, that's literally my point in why I went through this whole phase of in all talents and forms that are existent in the outside of the structural academic spaces, mm. where you're a doctor or you are a physician, if you are just a talented guy, no matter how big your numbers are, it doesn't help the immediate community you have because it can never prove or prove consistency. Yeah. So that means that you're hot now. I can name so many guys. My heart breaks when I see the likes of Dimbi Dimpopo, who was popping numbers visually campaign of the campaign and then i'm like but why was there no structural support if there was and i don't know about it i'll take that sure but i say he should have continued i mean at one point i'll tell mukila gao he had dipped musically which is normal sure but there was some structure that helped him around him to help stay afloat and before he passed may so rest in peace he was about to pop again yeah right and he was coming back and yeah. my neighbor was hitting oh but here's again we come back to this communal thing where the government sees as an example that we are a big part of the community yeah there's a big spend i might not know the numbers that comes from that community mm. but it's the same community that's neglected in all structured facets 
I think that becomes part of the space that people like myself, like myself, studied accounting, worked in financial services, I'm meant to come in because year in, year out, the sad stories about retired soccer players, about certain DJs, yeah. about other musicians, uh, always tragic. And at least for myself, I know I can come in and add value to some of these people and say, look, if you've just done 10 gigs at 30,000, at 300K, this is what I'm going to need you to do for this year. I'm going to need you to spread this money out over a year. Uh, let's say 360K for ease. At 30,000 a month, this is going to be your income for the year. Anything above this, we can then adjust or we can put it on to next year so that at least for this year, don't chow it now. And don't go and... This is one of the things I fight with with so many people when they talk money. Yeah. Don't buy things cash. Don't go drop a big deposit. There's a way that the money game is set up that I think I can add value in. Because all you want, to what you're saying about structural support, all you want is you want talent. I'm talented. I'm an amazing soccer player. And I'm a, I can dance. I can sing. I can chat. And by the way, those people are people that don't have to go to school outright for it. Yeah. They just need the right structural support. They just need support. How do we... I, I guess this is why the biggest talents... The Cristiano Ronaldo's, Messi's, LeBron James. This is probably why they have a management team. Because they're like, look, <laughs> maybe maybe I'm slow. Maybe I don't have the patience. You're the smart guy. I believe in you. I trust you. You will be paid what's fair. Please help me manage this thing. And and on the other side, because I've heard, <laughs> I've heard people on the other side complain, the kids need to humble themselves. True. To be like, I don't know this. But then some get scammed. But... Assuming that there's two sides, you're hot. Everyone wants you. You won't be hot forever. Baby like you said, you. the music thing dips. A soccer career, a rugby career only lasts so long. It was just sad to see. I mean, everyone has spoken publicly about the numbers that she was doing, and we don't know it was factual, but everyone is saying her booking record was 100K, mm. right? And, and, I can only say that it it just hurts that we, amongst the few that are getting those money or that kind of money, mm. and we don't have honest people that come back people like that. Yeah. Is it possible to be able to do what babes did? Sure. I mean, I look at people and so many that have passed who actually got the chance of a lifetime yeah. and they grabbed it and they left. But you sit back and you're like, but what about their parents? Did these people that were managing understand that? And I'd hope that we can have that as a big roundtable conversation. I'll tell you why. Talent management in South Africa, in my opinion, mm. needs visionaries that are going to build structure yeah. to say, if you're going to manage a, manage a talent, there needs to be certain things you've gone through. Yeah. And if you, at any point, uh, red flagged, we pull out the system sure. because you are part of the problem. 100%. Number one. Secondly, I think going back to the communal element of these talents doing so well, these talents are doing well in Makasla, mm. but we need to also teach this thing with Ekasle too, is where we need to build. 100%. But how do I build Abantabang Felayo? How do I build like Aslami? I've never been booked. If next, what's the biggest road show, Eskulmangayo, is happening in Katlong and I don't get booked, and when I make it big, I must go back to Katlong, your father Machita. Bang has bonk all over. That's where we now have a battle of again things things that I see as who are we really living for? Not to have forced on faith. I'm just thinking, <laughs> I set up a soccer tournament in memory of my late father, who was a soccer club owner. When things don't go well, and I'm trying to be like support, but just as a sick We don't even watch, we don't even watch your stuff. Who are you? And you're like being pop. Maybe I should have invested in the people that actually believe in me. I think that's where the new age leaders that are coming about. I don't like talking politics a lot. It's not my outright for tear. I deal with people and experiences of people and how they conduct themselves. But to think about who are going to lead us with care, that they care. Papa Simkazeden is one guy I give a shout out to. Yeah. He, what a leader. Chris Papas. Ah, what, what a leader. I want Papas. Yeah. Is, 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 
in the right community can do really well. Yeah. Because what he's doing in the case that, in the case that region and and district that he's working on doing very really well. Yeah. And he's always on the go. Yeah. But why am I using him as an example? He is serving a community that is largely black. Yes. But he has able to be able to include himself in the problem and solve it with these yeah. people. As a as a young white, white queer man. Like I mean, come on. So Tina Sunux is over. Okay, school is over. Who's supposed to help us if we're going back to what we're speaking about, which is the community? Someone who might find themselves maybe lost in our conversation. Oh, look, we beg a land. Oh, look, we beg a community. Oh, to pull a noba. Communal vision, you call it. Communal vision, mm. which I probably want to sit down and put it back into the final thought of. The real power that we are looking for right now is not in politi politicians. Mm. It's in a generation that again believes in morals. If it's wrong. Penal. If we're wrong, and mm. was sure. asabangan. Hundred percent. That's my principle. I'll tell you why. Because you then are not looking to grow. Sure. Because was I mean. Sure. How many times have you seen if you go out, people bakuzumga na kesi so mega nga nefetu, right? And jo bakuzumga na kesi so yatkaso ni kuzelan. Why is kamu shy? Because ni kuza after. Sure. Which is what we've seen happen in society. Sure. Umunta kange. Until one day, we was with language, we oh, again. Yes. Then now you are angry. Of course. Why are you angry? You turned a blind eye. You did turn a blind eye. As kwa le la ingli ni ko, ingli ni siya zugutik na banta bakanga. But we'll never say utumalun by fanu yaka. We will never call it out. We're very complicit as people. We're very complicit in a lot of the suffering, struggling, corruption. We speak about moral decay, but you're right. We turn a blind eye to moral decay around us. I ankiang en. And it was because he, like, and, and I say this publicly and most importantly to especially the younger couples. It was we keep turning a blind eye to you are the one of Vuna Umunduaku. Yes. And sometimes because you are Mtanda, sometimes it's because of fear, sometimes it's because you don't know what you're doing, you're blinded. Mm. But it's sad that we're able to sometimes turn a blind eye when we can see in this couple, Uban Usha Uban. Mm. And not to be a hypocrite myself, I've had to call out friends that I've caught in a situation like that. Sure. And I had to be called out, not for physical, but to say, Melot, yes. That was important. Sure. And why I bring it again, it's small things like that that help us really get irritated at work when you say you're gonna be at work at eight and you get there at half past 10 and we all keep quiet. Until one day you get caught out and you say, but what about me? Bonke ben zanjalo. And they find which non ben zanjalo. We are very complacent, like we're complacent with how much we are part of this corruption that's in the country individually. Because there's another problem. So you have now spoken about what's wrong. For trying to speak out and, right? and fix. So now here's my question to you, Peno. What are we supposed to do? Should we keep quiet? And be cowards? Should we ask the question, why are you doing this and die under a bullet? Mm. Which one? Because both of them are possible these days. I've got a very depressing answer for you. <laughs> we have moral decay because um, we have accepted to have low integrity for self. We have a low sense of self-worth. Identity. Um, I want to give a shout out to your mom, man. I mean, your business acumen hustling ability i i can only imagine yeah, you get from working at the business and for what she did to turn you from a little baby into a young man and i'm so happy that she was also happy to release you to eat timer because i personally believe especially as a man and a father that the lion cubs simba must at some point go to mufasa mm. and leave sarabi so that mufasa can teach him how to mm. and i want to give a shout out to your dad you know what you're explaining about his communal vision the fact that he was able to not just with these six kids Shout out to fathers that have six kids. <laughs> no, because like I deal with my Ely. <laughs> Shout out to fathers with six children, like myself. Uh, no, and all the other six. children. I've got six children. I, am, I don't even me, know. Me and your father, actually, we're here. No, but he's actually, 60. I'm speaking to a child now. No, he's 63. <laughs> uh, shout out to your dad, man. Like, sometimes we cannot explain our greatness, the foundation of why we are who we are. Yeah. Could be a grandfather, could be an environment you come in, we can't see. But when you hear a story about your mom, your dad, it 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 shines through. And I 
I can believe, and if they've never said it expl- explicitly, I know they're extremely proud of you. Yo. So congrats on, on what you've done for them. Um, my answer to your question is very depressing because I've done a lot of charity work. Mm. I have tried because I do believe the solution is a psychological one. Mm. It is education. It is getting a person to gain a sense of self and to understand that everything is within my power. Yeah. The reason I live in dirt is because I'm not cleaning. Or the reason I live in dirt is because I hang around people that dirty the place. So let me get myself out. Let me clean the place. Sure. The reason I'm not moving forward is because I'm not reading. Let me read. It's difficult, but let me do it. Let, the reason I'm fat, overweight, is because I'm not exercising or I'm eating too much. So I want to give people the power back and take it away from the politicians. Yeah. For some people, it's rogue pastors who just want your money. Again... You need funding. You go to church, same church your parents went to. You can't get funding at the church. You go to your pastor, you tell him about this idea, it will transform the community. He's like, my child, I'll pray for you. No, get the church to come together and share some of this money we've been giving you to build this thing. So take that power away and and bring it back to self. And a lot of people are, let's call it psychologically beyond repair, number one. And number two, most people have realized are by design not able to self-lead. And and I've been asked, is leadership, are you born with leadership? Are you trained? I believe both can both. exist. But almost all human beings are suckers to systems. And what we need to do mm. when you speak great terms, structural support, and what you're saying about young leaders, mm. what we need to be doing is we need to be building better systems to fight the current corrupt systems. But when you ask me what the solution is for a person, I'd say for the individual, get as far away from that toxic space as possible. I want to take the last bit and throw it back to you or throw it out there to say, when you say they have to fight corrupt systems, they are fighting their parents. Be specific. Be very direct. We are talking about people that they know their father is a thief. They know their mother is part of the scheme and then and they must decide to to live better. Your first grandchild will live good, but I'm not sure the second one will because every single road in South Africa has a problem. So, and not to sound like I'm here to complain. My, my thoughts are, I think more than anything. The Makaya being the home. The home where you come from. Not, not the village. The not home. the village, but the home you come from. My brother, there is no value of you living in a mansion in a community that has portal roads. There's no value because every car you're going to drive out is going to at some point experience a problem. Yeah. So you are grooming your child at Kuro to be the best. But where are they going to work? Amongst us, petrol, petrol attendants that are, are, are working for bare minimum. The guards who works for G4S, as an example, who know that they have nothing. And if they just turn a blind eye, they could get 100,000. Come on, man. The issue really starts with us saying, as in, which sounds like stupid. Because why would I want to do that to myself? But unfortunately, if, you, if we don't now, the third generation from us, the third generation from this age, in the 30s, 40s, will not get to see a South Africa that still has tap water. If you don't believe me, look at the reports. We will not get to see the democracy that we actually heard about from 1994, because I'm Yingan, and I can still probably still be a person about Yingan, but I'm learning every day, and we're asking the same question. Let's, let's, let me paint a different picture, and I'm going to throw the question you asked me back to you. Because you are saying, and you're right, it's our, it's our parents, it's our cousins, it's our friends, relatives. Instead of your mom owning a general dealer, mm. she owns a shabin with very vile alcohol, illegal alcohol, which actually really hurts people. And in the back end, she sells drugs. Mm. You still get to go to the nice schools, mm. you know. Mm. And then you move to Katlehong, where your father's actually Kienza. Mm. You know, he actually steals cars. He is a criminal. He moves some things around. We're speaking to Melody today yeah. with different parents. Yeah. My question to you is, Would you, should you write your parents off and move away from them? Assuming that, like you said, you try to rehabilitate 
but they want to beat you up because you're talking about catching a bullet. Yeah. So your parents probably won't kill you, but yeah. there's a chance that you're like, if you guys don't change, I will report you to the authorities. Yeah, Mom, but's a, but's Dad. Because you speak about family politics and yeah. look, it gets to the point and, and black Africans are big on Uktarata, Nogloya, you know, where you're doing well and because you're not sending money to your mom, the one day you go visit, you have a plate of food, next thing you're ill. And it's the same mom, yeah, I'm It's because he thinks he's going to make it. Like, I spoke about moving as far away from a toxic space as possible, assuming it's a township and you and your family are progressive. What happens when it's your parents, the your siblings? <laughs> should, should people of a higher moral standard who want better, should they write off their people and move away? Should they try and rehabilitate and fail? Should you be like, that's I'll try an and fix answer. them and die? But for that's an easy answer. Should they? Yes. Can they? <laughs> that's a difficult question. Should they? Yes. But can Move they? away. They should. But can they? Why I say that is because the ability of me moving away from a life that I've been taught to be soft and now I must unlearn it and be live in poverty takes a lot of character. So hear me. I'm not saying people must set themselves it's up. not even character. Failure. It's stupidity. To you, but to me, it's like actually, no, I'm saying moving from soft life to tough life because it's you're fine with yes. your, your dad, the hijacker, being in jail, and you now you can't go to a private school, you now have to. But it's even sorry, even myself, it's not the difference is, guys, it's also not in sooner than we should because of easy it doesn't like a lie that we keep quiet about, my brother. That's, I think, for me, my truth. Uguti, we can say all the perfect things at this table. We should uh, do this. We should be careful of the system. But the reality is, I don't have a child today yet. Mm. And I have a child. I'm already worried. Where am I? What situation am I leaving them in? In my own family. Mm. If I've done well and I've made plans, great. Will they do well? Based on the society. And 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 it's okay. I I rather be that dreamer that understands that there is a dream worth pursuing today. Now, Mama Puna tell her what that was not going to ever happen in the first twenty years of democracy in South Africa. But now, come on, That was. I was at Oranya. Yeah, I mean Oranya. I'm, I'm going to go visit Oranya. So, you know, I saw you say something like that. I'm like to someone else that was a, a, a stupid dream, but Oranya is built. Yeah. So if like, like there's no self-control yeah. to that level. No. Everything of yours, you are living in fear. Yeah. Maybe your wife is at work or you at work and your wife is at home. Good security system, but we've known the society we live in. It's not a problem until it affects the other one too. Yeah. I remember a good friend and brother of mine, Pesha Aduma, speaking about how men need to regain their sexual discipline as one of the things that will fix society. We speak about alcohol abuse, speak about drugs, but sexual discipline. Control yourself and be comfortable <sighs> to not need to sleep with a woman and just be okay on your own. And while I was giving the example, I actually thought of another good friend and brother of mine, Untlanta Lux, mm. and his father, Makesta, who was a, a, a criminal, passed away. And he speaks about him now and he tells the story of what his father. What do you say, criminal pastor? No, not pastor. He passed away. Oh. Sorry. That's what I was like. He passed oh, away. Confused. He was, he was a criminal. I'm, I'm putting it in inverted commas because I, I didn't know his dad. I don't know the story officially. It's, it's what he's said about yeah. his father. Shem, RIP, uh, man. Sure. But his father was a, was a criminal. I think he used to do cash and transit heists. At some point, he went to and pay his school fees cash with money stolen. So <laughs> according to Unklantalax, his father was like a Robin Hood of sorts because he yeah. gave to the community. But I'm wondering if his father was still alive, if uh, to what the question I was asking, the scenario, if he'd turn a blind eye to some of the bad things his dad did, if it holds his father to account, what does it mean? Because it... It becomes complicated. And the reality is for almost all of us, your dad when I'm at XL5, your mom maybe gets tenders in a there's funny a way. There's a body somewhere. There's a body under the... Someone you're, had you're, to go. You're not going to tell people. Truth is... And and some people, obviously, they... they What's it called? They ease their conscience by doing some charity work. But, you, but again, like I said, should we move away? Yes. 
can we complicate it, as you say? But if there's no vision of it, there will never be change of it. Mm. If Agna was first to school, I go, hey, Malaban by a church, and that's not my son. But today we live with people that are going to include if it's a good the level of money that is fully stolen, 100%, and at end of the day, they come and floss it to the people that go to work every day. Some are, some of these celebrity girls, some of the doctors, or Dr. Nandipa, even. Hey, at break. <laughs> no, um, um, on a serious note, I mean, I think we've just, if I could say anything, and I probably want to say anything, been part and parcel of our conversation today fair to identity moral campus an actual conscious asana nembeza in the most basic thing and it doesn't resonate with some of the young kids a child walks into a room hanga being a lady ngazikam khoba ngempama i fast why because it's disrespectful but to who only to a child you also struggle with that i struggle with that only to a kids child kids that don't greet But it can only be a problem to only to a child or someone who understands respect. Yeah. So if your child does not know respect, and I must come and mentor your child in a corporate space, hmm. there's now what we call integrational, um, intergenerational uh, issues. Because with intergenerational issues, we're dealing now with, this is how they grew up, hmm. this is how they taught us, but this is the people they need to deal with, which is now the generation that doesn't care. So Labantu Bobatatu, they come from three stones, mm. three parts and parcels, but they're supposed to coexist. I mean, we once did a show about it, and I just realized when I'm singa kulumu kulum kala nyingi yako, but boy yaga mia ba shoot I cry. Come on, chop on a gakulu nyaba. Sure. Kishit katulu bofigem nyang. Inga niwe asguti ya mami. They you don't wear your hat in the house. Yes. But they won't do that. They won't understand that because we aren't pressing. Even if we're a lost dying generation that believes in that, yeah. let's go out with the fight, man. Youth month is, is in the time where people are supposed to be encouraging young people. People are like, encourage which one? The same child that wants to sleep with me. Hmm. Show you your DMs. Young girls who are like, hey, hey, Millie, don't you want to go for drinks? And in your heart, you're like, dog, I'm an older brother to you. Oh my God, man. Hmm. But in their head they don't see what we see of course a younger sister but also we have been so corrupted in our portion or section in the group sifuna mape ababiza ngani konje ama 2000 sure i mean you can hear this is a mixed masala in closing phase i'd like to know what your your why is what is your driving force what do you believe is your purpose what are you currently working towards let's say your 5 10 year vision or have you figured out with all the platforms that you have that you influence what what is currently driving you i don't want to be popular i think that's at the top of it all i don't want to be popular intentionally if i get popular that's fine but i don't intend to want to be popular because when we become popular we lose the definition of what we were trying to do when we were not popular mm. i'd help people out of my heart I've run projects CSI projects from my own pocket for over a good 8 years mm. until covid happened I did that because it made me happy yeah. I stopped doing it because I realized that it seemed like I was trying to be popular through it and sure. like that's not my identity sure. so what drives me first to firstly is that I'm grateful that God chose me to do me I'm grateful that God gave me the heart I have to other people being sensitive is stupid to other people it's weak yeah. for me sensitivity as a man is not weak it's a power of understanding things as well yes yes to other emotional people, intelligence do, do you understand to other people when you are a person who cares you you who has fire you involve yourself in things mm. that don't want you and for me those things matter and that's why i think my vision has always been and probably hasn't changed and won't change is building a school where i'm able to say when you send your child to our school mm. to our legacy plan which is to teach children the value of respect to self Yeah. That now will launch us into teaching communities of the businesses you will own in the next 15 years. Mm. You will demand respect in your business amongst colleagues. Yeah. But how do we get there? We start with these little troops. So for me, my vision will always be to build a school, bro. Sure. To be able to know Uguti in Ghana's Nibim Fundo that is actually invested in the growth factor of society, mm. not the buildings, not the walls. Not your paycheck, but yeah. firstly the type of human you are. Yeah. Because there's too many people that are whack. Got a chance to sit with uh, Dr. Umar Ifatunde. Mm. Mm. Used to be Dr. Umar Johnson, and he's currently about to 
hopefully open the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey institutions. There's a primary school and I think a high school as well for boys. And he did say while he was here that he's really hoping he can find some of the abandoned schools. There's a lot of schools that aren't being used in this country. Yeah. And he's hoping to partner and collaborate with people that want to open similar things. And he's not the only one. There's yeah. an amazing old lady I met, a queen, who's opened an Africology uh, institution in KZN, um, going back to being a, a pan-Africanist, uh, being in tune with nature and spirituality, using some of the ways of the past. They call it Sankofa. Mm. Um, I'm hoping all of these things will come to fruition and in some way there will be some type of collaboration because the reality is most of us are trying to build better, healthier, more thriving societies on abundance. So I wish you nothing but the best and I'm hoping somewhere along the journey I can assist you in that. No, 100% appreciate it, bro. Um, shout out to you for being where you are with your conversations. You remember Thank we had you. a conversation offline about where you want to go and here it is today. Thank you. And I think more than anything, um, Fetu, if we could just go back to the big brother, big sister system amongst each other. Yeah. If Peno sees me really screwing up my life and not fear, because sure. that's the first thing that we struggle with. Sure. If you see what I, this one is going left. I think there's 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 a there's room yeah. to which I am don't I am this is not your char- your kind of character. Yeah. And that's how I see it, bro. But appreciate it. And like you said, you as a father, remember the Im- image isn't about being father of your children. Yeah. It's about being the father of children that need a father like figure in the around them. Jeez. Um your star is still gonna shine crazy. Let's rock. And more than that, I um I need you to please come back. There's still a whole lot more of stuff we can we need to chat about. Not even we can stuff that we need to talk about. And this wasn't long enough. But <laughs> thanks to we, your political party, we're gonna have to close it here because so we won't have shame. power soon. Fuck, Melody, thanks a lot. Bro. <laughs> we're out. Shut up. You know you guys can continue again. Or don't care. It's ten to. It's an hour fifteen. Hour, hour five. Hour five. Yeah. No, I think we close it off. Fine. Sure. But Melody's going to come back. Yeah. yeah. Please. Oh, God, then, yeah. yeah. All it is are just us switching to... Sure. Okay. That's not a, a, a big thing. No, no, no. It's fine. Bro. Thanks a lot, bro. I wanted Easy, us to brother. start with Batu and Trip, and I wanted to ask you your thoughts about being pro-black. But no, if I remember... Are we cutting or not? Yeah, what am I? We're cutting. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, look, I mean, even from, a, even from a, 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 brand, a brand perspective, bro, I don't think we understand how easily we get lost in being pro-black versus pro-value black. Pro-value black is something that I always identify as. It's so valuable and even great it's owned by a black person. The lady that I am assisting, she owns the Sobe. So I, I, I manage their social media um, imaging because I'm a groomer. I've always been. I'm a, metro, a metrosexual. I cut my Jeez, hair. Groomer sounds so bad. You know the term groomer is a machita kulisigan. No, man. I get it, there's context. In mine, there's context. In my sentence, there's context. Metrosexual. Shit, my nails are shining. I did them at Tammy Taylor. Yeah, you you must be able to. I was forced. I don't do these things. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You enjoying it? Why are you doing your nails? Melody, you're saying something important. (laughs) (laughs) So, so with the clients we're helping, one of the things that her and I agreed on, which he... We're, we are looking to shoot every single episode that we shoot, every single grooming moment. It must not scream darky. And then you hear, shit, this is a black-owned shop. That, for me, is pro-value.